Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Somebody open your mouth and give God a praise. Hallelujah. If you know that, you know that God is good. Just open your mouth and give God a real praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody just shout, Hallelujah. 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 Oh, David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. If you know that God has been good to you, just open your mouth one more time and shout, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. God bless you over here. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Time is far spent and I know you want to go. Praise the Lord Jesus. Just want to greet everyone in this awesome house today in the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of the only God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Special greetings to our host pastor, Lady Cardinal. God bless you. Put your hands together for her. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord Jesus to our bishops and overseers and assistant pastor and to all the ministers who are here. Just want to greet you in the most exalted name of the Lord Jesus. I want to recognize Evangelist QC Gray, God bless you, sir, and to Minister Soan, praise the Lord Jesus, and to his entire family on this notable day. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Also, I want to recognize my wife here and my son. They're here for the first time. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> this is my second time here, I believe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Came here some years ago with you, Pam, but. God has been good. And to all of God's wonderful people, I just greet you in his name. Just feel greeted in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you, Sister Kedisha. It's good to see you. Good to see the baby. Good to see the mother of my good friend, Romaine. God bless you, Mommy. And thank you, soul man. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Tell me somebody and tell him it's good to see you in church. It's good to see you in church. Come on, smile with someone. Show some teeth. Hallelujah. Come, it's only the gum. I'm just the gum. Amen. It's good to see you in church. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise his name. I will be very short today. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's turn with me quickly to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I want to preach today on the small team, not for me only. Tell somebody, not for me only. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, if your custom is to stand as the scripture is reading, please stand in the house if you're able to. In verse 6, he said of chapter 4, 2 Timothy, For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Father, we thank you for your word. Speak to us as only you alone can. In Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands and... Just take your seat in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just want to recognize the rich history and its hundred year of Pentecostalism in Jamaica and the rich history in this house to your former pastor and apostle, praise the Lord Jesus, and uh, to Bishop Codner also and now to Lady Codner. Rich history, amen. You are already blessed just to come here and to sit in this house. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Bishop Allison, a great man of God and the legacy continues. Amen. If you know that you are blessed, put your hands together. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. There is something that is very important about continuity. Praise the Lord Jesus. Many organizations actually die because there is lack of planning and lack of continuity. Praise the Lord Jesus. And when great leaders pass on, when there is nobody there to take up the mantle, then 
the organization or the establishment goes down or goes through a period of regrouping. Praise the Lord Jesus. But we're so glad that Bethel born again that that was not the case. Amen. Come on, on the sound so. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's very important that we have continuity in the kingdom of God. And if there, history tells us that even the church, thinking of the church of Ephesus, went through a period where they were basically non-existent because there was lack of continuity. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. It's very important that there is continuity because God is a God of generations. The Bible said unto one generation and to the other generation. God just keep moving. Hallelujah. Nobody is here forever but God remains God. Hallelujah. And as long as he is God, he's going to have somebody to deal with. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to God. So God deals with generation. Hallelujah. And if you're here today, God wants to deal with you. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So we understand that the Apostle Paul, hallelujah, the awesome ministry of the Apostle Paul, hallelujah, many times we preach, we speak of the ministry of the Apostle Paul because it was so phenomenal, hallelujah. His missionary journeys and what he accomplished throughout his ministry, the healings and the testimonies and the hand of God that was in his ministry was so exemplary. Hallelujah. Many times we speak of his ministry. But if the Apostle Paul ministry just stopped there, then it would not have been as effective as it should have been. So there has got to be continuity. Praise the Lord Jesus. It was this, the Apostle Paul, the same Paul who was responsible for the death of Stephen. And right through his ministry, he struggled with it. Hallelujah. Because he was on the other side. But he talks about the grace and the mercy of God. I want to challenge you today. Hallelujah. Sometimes you walk up in the church and the enemy reminds you of who you were some time ago. And because of that, the praise is hindered. The worship is hindered. But I want someone to look the devil in the face and say, that was then. But I am redeemed. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There is so much power in understanding the mind and controlling our minds in the direction of how God wants our minds to be. And that's why the apostle declared it with the mind that we serve God. Hallelujah. As long as the mind is where it should be, then the devil can't hold you down. I, I, I hear people talking about the, the power of the devil. Huh? But as long as your mind is connected with God, huh? the devil is ripped and powerless huh? because of the anointing. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Not for me only. So the apostle Paul, so many experiences, uh, so many, hallelujah, it, it blew my mind sometimes when I read uh, the experience of the apostle Paul. He said he was one born out of due season. He said he was not numbered among the twelve, but he did more than the twelve. Hallelujah, the apostle Paul, uh, he was so full, uh, hallelujah, of God, hallelujah, that he said even though he don't speak in tongues in the church, he speak in tongues more than everybody who was there. It simply means he was living in pride. He was living in dedication. Hallelujah. When you check his closet, hallelujah, the body goes of pride. Oh my God, don't you know that God looks at that and that's why when God saw Cornelius, the Bible said in prayers, became a monument or a memorial before God and God had to respond. Paul was no ordinary person. He was a scholar, hallelujah. He was no fool, hallelujah. Touching the law, he was blameless, hallelujah. He understood everything in the Pharisee lineage, hallelujah. He was a Pharisee of Pharisee. His daddy was a Pharisee, my God Almighty. And he was trained at the feet of Gamaliel. 
It was the same Gamel who said to them, if this be of God, you can't stop it. My God, what wisdom. But Paul was a student of Gamel. And the Bible said that when God ministered to Paul and put him out of what he was in and revealed to him what he wanted him to do, oh, the awesome ministry that was gifted to him. Thousands came in. Three wonderful missionary journey. Power all around. One time somebody fell from upstairs and everybody said they were dead. But Paul was preaching in the QC. He looked over and said, oh, don't worry about it. And he just kept on preaching. So powerful was the relationship with God. When he was finished, he just pulled it together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the house uh, where Bishop Allison was. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, I want to think of somebody's mind uh, to understand that you are no ordinary person. Uh, whatsoever that was written there, uh, it is also for you. Uh, the same power, uh, the same anointing, uh, the same gifting uh, is also yours. But the interesting thing about this thing was that the apostle recognized that his time was up. He recognized that God was about to snuff out life, hallelujah. And he was to make a transition. Oh, God Almighty, he was not worried about the transition. He was welcoming the transition. Because somebody said, hallelujah to God. If we die, we shall live again. You know, sometimes the apostolics, Sometimes we, we, we don't even understand some things and we begin to get nervous. Uh, but God is still in charge. Uh, he has not given up the throne. Uh, he's still in charge, somebody. Uh, he's still in charge. Oh my God. You know there is a privilege to die in Christ. Because the word said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Ah, some of us, we don't want to die. Uh, we want to enjoy life down here. Uh, but this is not even life. Oh my God. Oh, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I believe in this last time, uh, the apostolic church uh, has got to get a view of glory land. Uh, we have got to get a view again uh, of where we are going. Uh, I know we sing the song. Uh, my home is in heaven. Uh, but we are busy just trying to live down here. Uh, and there is nothing wrong. Uh, we'll occupy it until he comes. Uh, but we have got to ensure uh, that we are laying up treasure. Oh my God. So the Apostle Paul knew uh, that he was laying up some treasures. Uh, when he was shipwrecked, uh, he was laying up some treasures. Uh, when he was in the midst of Paul's virgin, uh, he was laying up some treasures. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, when he was beaten with stripes, uh, he was laying up some treasures. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, when he was down there, uh, naked and in famine, uh, he was laying up some treasures. Uh, when he was hungry, uh, Shia, hallelujah, he was laying up some treasure. I believe that he knew that his treasure was almost to the brim. It was almost ready to There was really nothing more that he could lay up. And so God impressed upon his spirit that it was no time to go. But just, just before you go, there is a word you're about to release to Timothy. Hallelujah to God. There is a word. Because yes, you are going. But the ministry must continue. And it can only get greater. It can only get stronger. We have got to understand we don't know this. I see many screwings. I see many in fightings. Uh, hallelujah. In the apostolic arena in Jamaica. Uh, everybody want to be somebody. Uh, but nobody want to serve God. Uh, oh, forget about your ministry. Uh, forget about who you think you are. Uh, and recognize who is the king. If you listen to some of our leaders. You wonder if they went to Calvary. Uh, 
and show that it is finished. You want that blood was shed for them. Hallelujah. But we have got to understand that God is in charge. And when God is in charge, whatsoever God said, that must be. And so the treasure who was full, and he called to him. Hallelujah. In this letter, as he was writing to him, I have I have now ready to be offered. When he was going to go down to Jerusalem, they said to him, they're going to bind up this man. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm not only ready to be bound, but I'm ready to be offered. He was already ready in his mind. The time was not yet there, but his mind was ready. So when the time came, his mind had been there waiting a long time. So he said, I am now ready to be off. And the time of my departure is at hand. He was not asking Timothy to cry for him, or to weep for him, or to have a night night for him. He was trying to empower Timothy, because my time is done, but your time is coming. And as long as God is sitting on the throne, he will all Always have a woman. Always have a servant. My God Almighty. And so he said to him in this letter, he validated what he has done and there's nothing wrong in validating what you have done. As long as you have done it through Christ, I have fought. I am in clear conscience. I have fought a good fight. I did not fight to build myself up or to build my name. I fought for the name of Jesus. When Peter was in breach, he was a chief apostle, but I would stand in the defense. I was laying up some treasures. How could you do that, Peter? He was about to destroy the early church, but it was Paul who stood up to him. He was no whip. Hallelujah. If we're going to be soldiers for the Lord, we can't be no whip. We can't be men pleasers and everybody must love us and everybody must like us. When God's in a word, we are going to Akash. Warriors for truth. Warriors, hallelujah, for holiness. Warriors for the justice of God. And he said, henceforth, because I've finished and because I've run the race, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, that righteous judge, he's going to give it to me. You know, sometimes you know you deserve some things. And you're probably in church. Nobody saw you, and nobody gave you no accolades, but you are down in pride, down in fasting, don't seek in the face of the Lord. You don't need to worry yourself, because the Lord, the righteous judge, at that last day, he will give you what is yours. You don't worry yourself, because nobody sees you, and nobody knows your name. Forget about your name, and give God some glory. and have over to and the green the Lord the righteous church it is comforting past the call hallelujah I may not see you I may not know what you have been through and what you have done hallelujah just to stay in connection with God but God knows God knows God knows hallelujah there are some people in this audience uh, who have been seeking the face of the Lord. Uh, and they don't come up here any at all, Pastor. Uh, but they have been seeking God. Uh, and God will see them in secret. Uh, he's going to reward them openly. When God starts to bless uh, the devil at the back of the woman, what's happening? Uh, what's taking place? Uh, I don't know where this blessing is coming from. Uh, but it's coming not from the east or from the west. Uh, but from
he was about to leave his prodigy. Timothy would automatically become sorrowful upon reading this word. But the Apostle Paul had to insert something in the lines of the text just to give Timothy, and not just Timothy, but just to give us some hope. Hallelujah to God. So he said, not for me only, but for unto all them also that love his appearing. And the question is asked, who are those who will love his appearing? Who are those who will love the appearing of the Lord? Only the blood washer and the blood bought. Only the sanctified, the fire baptized, the Holy Ghost filled, the water baptized in Jesus' name. Only those who have been living holy and righteous life will love his appearing. So the Apostle Paul was saying to Timothy, I'm going. My time is done. But it's your time to run now. Hallelujah to God. That. And not only that, what I'm receiving, you can receive it too. Is there anybody in the building today uh, who don't love the appearing of the Lord? Uh, if the Lord should walk in this house right now, uh, if the trumpet should sound, uh, hallelujah to God, uh, and the Lord should walk in this house right now, uh, if you're here uh, and you'll be running to hide, uh, I want to pray for you today. Uh, I want to pray for you. Uh, if you're here, uh, you have been in church a long time past. Uh, you may have been here a long, long time, uh, but if the Lord show up now, uh, you know that you're not ready to go. Uh, the Apostle Paul is saying, uh, you can be ready. Not for me, though. Not for me, though. Not for me, though. Not for the ministers and the bishops and the apostles and all these guys. Not for them only. Uh, but for all. I believe the Spirit of God is walking through this benches and he's searching and he's saying, Yes, I know you're not ready. What are you going to do? We have come here just to celebrate the blessing of some beautiful babies, but God has another agenda. He wants to be with your soul. I have fought a good fight. I'm finished. I'm done working. But God wants some other people to work. There are some people here past the pond. Giftings are in them. Powerful miracles are in them. But God wants to away their minds to understand who they are. I'm finished preaching. Some of us have been in church for years. And all we do is come and go through the motions. And remember because we don't get a chance to preach. Or we don't get a chance to do this or do that. Whatsoever your calling is, nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. But if you don't obey yourself to God, you will die without opening a word of the ministry that God has known. We want to pray for you today. God bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Everybody stand in the house of the Lord. I want everybody to find somebody holding by their two hands. I want you to hold to somebody's hand who is ready to go home. And if you're holding on to somebody's hand who is not ready to go home, let go that hand and hold somebody else. Because the hand that you hold on to must be feeling something that is going to propel them to go home. I want you to hold on to a worshiper hand.
children. Baptize in Jesus' name. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Sing on the choir, but you can't find them no more. The devil is a liar. We're pulling them back in right now. I dare some of you to call some of these children names. Jesus! Somebody shout Jesus! 
Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this church. I hear it. 